have you ever wondered how the Austro-Hungarian Empire could look in the 21st century? Imagine the politics in Europe with this massive country in its center. If the empire democratized and embraced the free market, it could have the largest population and GDP in Europe. I mean, even if it doesn't get to the 21st century, imagine how cool it would be if Austria-Hungary was a part of World War II. What if they just don't attack Serbia? You probably think this is where the video is going, but no, that has already been done before and I want to explore new possibilities. But how could the empire survive if World War I isn't avoided? Could Austria-Hungary have just pieced out of the war to survive? I'm sure Karl I, who was the Kaiser of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, by the end of the war would have liked that since he tried to pull Austria-Hungary out of the war. But by the time he had assumed power, both sides of the conflict had already lost too much and the Entente would accept nothing but an unconditional surrender from any of the central powers. Austria-Hungary was forced to fight as long as they could. At the end, when Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire collapsed and signed an armistice, Austria-Hungary followed them because they knew that with the southern flank fully opened, it was only time until the Allies occupied them and their empire collapsed. What if Austria-Hungary signed a separate peace and left World War I? I'm Porfirius and I make videos on interesting history and alternate history topics. If you like that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. There were many moments when Austria-Hungary could have realized that the war was a lost cause and signed a separate peace deal, most of them in the beginning of the war. But Germany and Austria, or maybe just Germany, was doing fairly well, so Austria didn't have the motivation to sign a separate peace. And it didn't help that Kaiser Franz Joseph was worried about Austria-Hungary's prestige, not realizing the situation the empire was in. The first opportunity for peace is actually right after the war began, when Austria-Hungary got pushed by Russia and couldn't capture Serbia. The leadership could have realized that judging by their performance against Serbia and Russia, they had no hope of coming on top against the Allied powers, even if Germany reached Paris. So Austria-Hungary would sign a separate peace and maybe even attack Germany. Another opportunity for a separate peace would be if they realized that if Bulgaria or the Ottomans fall from a successful advance from Greece or a naval invasion, a large southern front would be opened, which they would not be able to contain. So peace could come after the Greek entry into the World War. Another point of divergence could be if the Gallipoli campaign was a victory for the United Kingdom and the Ottoman Empire capitulated. Or maybe we could use the actual peace proposal in the Sextus Affair in 1917 as a point of divergence. But the last two options probably deserve a video on their own. I could probably continue listing times where the defeat of the central powers was foreshadowed, but generally all these signs were ignored either because the leadership was too stubborn to realize their mistake or they were relying on Germany carrying the war. And in the later parts of the war, the reason was just because they knew the Allies would not accept a conditional surrender. So I'm going to pick the timeline in which Austria-Hungary immediately gives up after attacking Serbia and failing. And it's not just because it's the funniest, I also believe it leads to quite an interesting turn of events. For a scenario to be more realistic, I would also change the Austro-Hungarian monarch from Franz Joseph to Karl I, who was his nephew. Because Franz Joseph would probably not want to ruin Austria-Hungary's prestige by negotiating with a minor power like Serbia. I don't think it's very unrealistic for Franz Joseph to pass from natural causes earlier since the guy was like 200 years old. The peace between Austria-Hungary and the Entente wouldn't change much in Europe. Serbia might give some concessions to Austria-Hungary since they technically were not in that strong of a position. Russia could take parts of Austrian Galicia, but considering the unrest Austria-Hungary was already suffering due to many minorities, I don't think that would even impact the empire that much. At worst, the price of grain would increase, since the Galician provinces were a main contributor of food to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The biggest consequence of the peace deal would be the Austro-German split, because Germany obviously would be very upset at Austria abandoning them, similar to what Italy did in our timeline. I think Germany would want to give up on the war altogether if the Entente powers allow them to sign a peace which lets them keep their navy and army. If Germany has similar success in pushing in France, the Entente will definitely grant them favorable terms. I think they might lose most of their colonies or maybe have to pay some reparations. And even though Germany's colonies were nothing to brag about and were unprofitable, I think Germany would rather pay reparations than endure the humiliation of not having colonies. Overall, the consequences for this universe's central powers would be nothing compared to the restrictions imposed by the Versailles Treaty in our timeline. I mean, 
Austro-Hungary collapsed before they could even sign their own peace terms. Most people assume that if Austro-Hungary survived World War I, which in this scenario they technically did, even though World War I lasted for a couple of months, they would become a loose federation, giving autonomy to their minority regions and eventually just disintegrating. I don't think this line of thinking is wrong necessarily, but the federalization of the Austro-Hungarian Empire is a bit overblown. Maybe after the war, they will become more than a dual monarchy, but rather a triple or quadruple monarchy, with Bohemia and Illyria also becoming a kingdom with their own administration. Of course, the new kingdoms would have the same king, that being Karl I. This would still upset the people, but overall, Austria-Hungary would be more stable than it was after the First World War in our timeline. I think communist sentiment will rise in this new empire because most of the conditions for communist support that existed in Russia, for example, are also met in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. That's part of the reason why, after the war, in our timeline, there was a short-lived Hungarian Communist Republic, which got ganged up on by its neighbors. So I think in the following years, Austria-Hungary becomes increasingly more socialist and accepting of all the ethnicities within its borders. The monarchy would gradually lose its grip on authority and more power would be transferred to the people. That covers the domestic situation in the empire, but what would the new strategic goals of this country be? Austria-Hungary would drift towards the Allies because otherwise they would be isolated in the world stage. The Empire could give the Italians parts of Tyro and the Adriatic, settling their disputes and allowing the two countries to establish an alliance focused on splitting up the Balkans and Anatolia. The German monarchy, however, would become more authoritarian and isolationist. They could give up on the naval race with Britain and mend their relationship with France by returning Alsace-Lorraine, or they could double down on militarizing and continuing the naval arms race, becoming an outsider in European politics in the process. Germany's position in between Europe's great powers provides them with benefits and drawbacks. Germany can expand in every direction, and if Europe would ever be unified under one country, the best bet would be Germany, at least in the 20th century. The negatives of being in the center of Europe is that your neighbors could all gang up on you and you stand no chance of victory. That's mainly why Germany developed its quick war strategy, because they could never hope to compete in a long war on multiple fronts. A quick war would allow them to achieve a fast victory on one front, so they can focus on the other front and achieve victory there. That way, Germany would never be fighting in a prolonged war on multiple sides, at least in theory. I think Germany would not choose to cooperate with other powers, and instead, they would continue their naval arms buildup, even though the war had ended. There could be a potential plan for an invasion of Austria-Hungary, so Germany could retake the German-speaking lands within the country. Germany's high command before the outbreak of World War I thought that Russia would be able to surpass them in 20 years, and they were already losing the naval arms race against Britain, so Germany would want to execute their plan in the near future, maybe in the 1920s. Many people don't realize that the centralization and nationalization of the German nation didn't begin with the Nazi party, but it began way back before World War I. The Kaiser's regime was focused on increasing the central bank's power and government's control over the economy, because that made it easier for them to wage longer and more costly wars. That process will continue in Germany in the following years. This will transform the country into something similar to Germany in our timeline, just without the ethnic cleansing and crippled economy. Tensions on the German and Austro-Hungarian border will continue to escalate. Austria-Hungary by this point would have a very weak monarch and would be mainly controlled by a new federal government which represents all the minorities within the country. I would like to imagine that the political system in the country would resemble the one in the United States of America and Austria-Hungary would have its own president. Doesn't that sound funny? Tensions would rise specifically over the southern German territories which were historically under Austrian influence and Silesia due to the ever-looming threat of war. Austria-Hungary, or as it might be known by now, the United States of Central Europe will reform its military and encourage innovation in military technology. Russia will become an oppressive regime constantly suppressing its population because of the increasing difficulty for the aristocratic elite to keep their power. But the oppression would only serve to make the socialists more careful and push them deeper underground. So in any case of war, the Russian government would be in big trouble because there will be thousands of socialist committees scattered across the countries ready to organize. As far as Britain and France, they will be in the same situation as they were in before the First World War in our timeline. Before Germany had a chance to attack any of its neighbors, I think the Ottoman Empire would collapse from internal pressure and their Middle Eastern holdings 
would be split between France, Britain and maybe Italy. Greece and Turkey might go to war, which would lead to Italy and Austria-Hungary expanding their influence in the Balkans. Maybe Italy takes some islands away from Greece, or they establish a zone of influence in Anatolia, expanding their economic influence in Turkey. Austria-Hungary might try to expand its influence to Montenegro, Serbia and maybe even Bulgaria. It is possible that Germany and Russia would pursue an alliance because Germany would not want to fight over three fronts and Russia would want to reclaim its influence in the Balkans and liberate the Slavic people within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Let's say the alliance between the two countries is formed to make the factions more equal. The alliance might be known as the Emperor's Alliance or the Cousins' Alliance because the emperors of the two countries were cousins. Germany would launch a surprise invasion into Austria-Hungary at around 1920, quickly splitting the country in half by encircling Bohemia and Moravia. Italy and France would declare on the side of the Austrians and Russia would declare on the side of Germany. France would aggressively start pushing into Germany, unlike in our timeline, in the First World War. In World War I, France was actually very focused on the offensive, even though they were being pushed back. The reason France switched to a more defensive strategy was because the trauma and losses from the coup of the offensive mindset which the French army had in World War I. When France hasn't suffered the traumatic losses from trench warfare, the aggressive spirit will still be intact. Italy will send the enforcements to the US of Central Europe immediately to stabilize the front, which at this point would be in full-on collapse with the Russian invasion from Galicia. The Austrians will stabilize around the Carpathians and Danube River and French offensives would be stopped by the River Rhine. The war would turn into a slog because the usefulness of tanks and airplanes would not be discovered in the short war that started in 1914. So like in our timeline, the front lines will begin to move again when arms development reaches a certain level. Otherwise, the war will still be one of attrition. Serbia would probably join the war at a certain point in time because they would want to liberate the Slavs within the Austro-Hungarian Empire and establish Yugoslavia. Following Serbia's entry into the war on the side of the emperors, Bulgaria would join on the Entente side because they would want to take revenge on Serbia and reclaim Macedonia. This would start a domino effect that would bring almost all of the Balkans into the war. Greece would join on the German side and the new Turkish Republic would join the Entente side to fight Greece. Romania would join the Imperial Alliance because they would want to take the Brugia from Bulgaria and Transylvania from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. You have probably noticed that Britain isn't in this war. That's because Britain would want to stay outside of European wars and keep their strategic ambiguity, but seeing the escalation in the scale of the war, they will realize that the side that comes on top would decide the fate of Europe. The UK would want to defend their interests in the new European order because Germany was trying to challenge their naval superiority and at this point Germany's navy would probably have established a dominance in the Baltic and North Sea, imposing a partial blockade on France. The United States are probably not joining this war because Germany would have the chance to implement unrestricted submarine warfare and completely destroy all sympathies from the United States public because Britain would only join the war maybe two years after it started. The British entry into the war would decide the winning faction. That's why Britain would have lots of bargaining power with the Entente. Britain could probably gain a colony or two from France and assurances for influence in the Balkans and their continued naval dominance. Germany would already be weakened and with the combined effort of France, Britain, Austria, Hungary and Italy, they would start to crumble. At this point, Russia can actually have a coup that makes the country switch sides and declare war on Germany. The new government could broker a separate peace with the Allies and actually gain some land. If that doesn't happen, Germany would eventually collapse. Hunting Germany would fight to the bitter end, they would sign an armistice, and if Russia doesn't follow them, Germany might even switch sides and attack their old ally because the Allies would probably offer them more favorable terms if they help in the coming invasion of Russia. This is actually not that unrealistic because after World War II, the Allies plan to use radical anti-communist German veterans for a potential war with the Soviet Union. Operation Unthinkable estimated that they could form 13 German divisions that they could use against the Soviet Union. Speaking of the Soviet Union, the Russian Empire by that time will probably be on the brink of civil war between the Reds and the Whites, and if there is to be a combined Entente invasion, the Russian Empire will definitely collapse into civil war. If the Allies don't help the monarchists in the following civil war, communism would come on top. I believe after this World War I and a half, the map would look something like this. With Austria gaining Silesia and maybe Bavaria and parts of Eastern Germany, France would reclaim the alsace lorraine region, Germany would actually gain some parts of Poland if the scenario in which they were a part of the Russian invasion takes place. 
This would largely prevent the rise of revanchism and radicalism that happened in our timeline after Germany lost the First World War. If you want to watch a video about Poland and Germany forming an alliance, click here. And if you want to see what Austria-Hungary could look like in the 21st century, click here.